Alzheimer's disease has an effect on its sufferers and their loved ones that simply cannot be imagined until it has happened to you. The diagnosis is pretty devastating. And, and you know, we both went through a period where it was like, this can't, you know, can't be, it's awful. Uh, how could this happen? He's young, he's vital, he's super intelligent. Uh, you know, this, we, we were victims. You have two choices. You can either just give up and let the disease kind of destroy you, or you can try to fight it and, and, and do something about it. I chose to do it right here at the Sanders Brown Clinic. Our mission is threefold. First, research dedicated to understanding healthy brain aging as well as diseases of the elderly like Alzheimer's disease. Second, educational and outreach activities and partnerships within the university as well as across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And third, our clinical programs for healthy brain aging volunteers, Alzheimer's disease patients, families, caregivers, including an active clinical trials program to test new therapies. Our theme is transitions and translation, that is to define the earliest changes in the brain that occur long before memory loss develops, defining the key mechanistic transitions from normal aging to Alzheimer's disease, and translating that knowledge more rapidly into potential new therapies to treat this devastating disease. This focus on early diagnosis is critical, which is why the Sanders Brown Center on Aging has 700 research volunteers of whom 500 have no history of Alzheimer's or related disorders. We want to identify the earliest signs of Alzheimer's starting. Uh, a lot of clinical trials uh, that have been carried out or have, they really just have not worked. And part of that may be because the disease, which takes a long time to manifest itself, is already well underway by the time people started really losing memory, which is how they determine clinically whether you have Alzheimer's disease or not. Pathologically, uh, you're looking at specific things after someone is dead. We obviously want to know uh, what is different actually before they get sick. That's what we would like to know. Um, so we're looking for the very earliest changes from the normal pattern that you, would, that you would get and which of those are connected with the Alzheimer's disease. For over two decades, the University of Kentucky has followed a very stable group of individuals that is very unusual in the whole world in terms of the stability of the assessments. That makes it so that when we perform the autopsies we get a whole lot more information. There's a very rich clinical pathological correlation. One of Sanders Brown's greatest successes has been the recruitment of African American volunteers who are traditionally underrepresented in such studies. Reaching African Americans and trying to uh, interest them in participating in research has been a real challenge. Uh, but, but it's essential for us to have their participation in order to have data that represents the entire population. Mr. and Mrs. R are both in the volunteer program and also reach out to their community to do the same. We do know that African Americans develop Alzheimer's disease at double the risk uh, of our Caucasian counterparts. We know that they develop the disease even earlier. We know that we don't have enough African American participants in research and we know that in order for the research to be meaningful it is vitally important that we have African-American participation because they are at greater risk. We have at Sanders Brown something that is called the African-American Dementia Outreach Partnership. Uh, we lovingly call it ADOP but ADOP includes certain center staff people it also includes a council of ministers that represent five large African-American congregations. And it also includes a community action council, which includes members of the uh, community at large. We all work together to do what we need to do to serve our community. It's not like we sit in our ivory tower and make decisions for a community, uh, an underserved community like the African American community, but we confer and consult and plan and work together. It's making all this outreach and research mean something that really counts, and Sanders Brown does that through its clinical trials.
We can look at a lot of different pieces from the basic science laboratories to the research projects reaching out into the communities and educating folks and all of that brings together a wealth of information. But in many respects that's meaningless unless we can turn that information around, bring it back to the millions of people that suffer from Alzheimer's disease in the form of new treatments, potential cures, disease models modifying therapies for Alzheimer's, the hope that one day we will hold that cure in our hands. I've been participating here at the Sanders Brown uh, Center for almost a year now, so I've got another six months to go on the trial. I think people need to participate in a clinical trial because it empowers you. It gives you a chance to do something, you know. What we do in life echoes in eternity. And you know, we don't want to be just a statistic. We want to be, you know, part of the solution that cures this disease. Our efforts are broad. They really do span the translational realm from the basic researchers to what we do clinically. We have a huge focus on normal aging, learning how to promote normal, healthy aging large numbers of volunteers in the community that allow us to study the earliest memory and thinking changes because eventually when we have a cure in one hand we'll need to identify people at the earliest stage in the other and only putting together those two pieces will we ever really cure Alzheimer's disease.